today I am so very excited to show you how to make a Christmas cake. I have all my ingredients laid out here and I am going to start chopping some of the fruit. So they're dried fruit and I have some dates and I have some nuts here. I'm going to start chopping them and I've got all the other ingredients measured and laid out. So while I chop away, here's some history about the Christmas cake. Christmas cake became an English tradition. However, the early Christmas cake didn't look anything like the Christmas cake we know today. Not least because it was called the plum porridge. It had porridge essentially because people fasted just before Christmas and ate porridge on Christmas Eve. Soon, dried fruit, honey and spices were added. And eventually, over the next couple of decades, they removed the old porridge from the original recipe, adding wheat flour, eggs and butter. How delicious does that sound? Porridge that would have held all the ingredients together when they eliminated oat and added the eggs, flour and butter, they knew that these ingredients would hold all the other dried fruit and nuts together to form the cake. And in what resulted in a boiled plum pudding. So it was a pudding before it became a cake. However, only the richer families had the ovens to bake cakes like we do today. The rest of them just boiled it or steamed it. So if you were to follow a traditional Christmas cake recipe from the internet, let's say, you won't do yourself a favor and skip that step of boiling the dried fruit. Quite frankly, you don't need that because alternatively, you can do what I have done, which is soak your dried fruit and nuts. I've done it for over like two weeks, it's been soaking in port. So I've used port. You could use your favorite tipple. It could be Grand Marnier brandy or sherry brandy or even whiskey becomes lovely, moist and succulent and when you bake your cake you will notice a difference. Let me tell you a little bit about the different regions that embrace Christmas cake making. The Scottish. Their speciality is the traditional whisky Dundee. As the name implies, the cake originated in Dundee and is made with Scotch whisky. And in Yorkshire, a fruity Christmas cake is eaten with their signature cream in Wensleydale. And further afield, in Germany, Stollen, a traditional German fruit cake, it's also called Weinest es Stollen, or even Christen Stollen. And in Italy, Panettone, which started off as a sweet sourdough bread with a distinct purpilla shape laden with dried fruit and candy peel. The Sri Lankan Christmas cake used treacle instead of cane sugar, included spices like nutmeg, cinnamon, and even black pepper. But today I'm going to leave out the black pepper and include lovely spices like the cloves and the cardamoms, in addition to the cinnamon and the nutmeg, of course. And I shall be adding rose water, port, Wait for this. I am going to be using semolina instead of wheat flour and some ground almonds. And you have to trust me on this one because this is my mum's age old recipe. And semolina will readily absorb all these luscious juices and flavours and become these tiny little granular vessels that carry these most amazing flavours. I would personally love a crumbly, luscious cake than a glutinous, toji one, wouldn't you? So now we start to actually mix the cake together. So we have 175 grams of butter, which is going into the mixing bowl, and then we have 210 grams of sugar, and I'm using mascarada sugar, and we cream it together. <laughs> is creamed together and to that I will add the eggs one by one and I've just scooped up the zest of the orange from my chopping board so the zest of an orange zest of a lemon and a zest of a lime is going in now the next 
I'm going to add some of the dry fruit. So I'm not expecting this cake to rise a great deal. So it doesn't matter in which order you add your ingredients, as long as once you've added the semolina and the baking powder, you want to gently mix it. That's what it looks like at the moment. I'm going to let it mix for about a minute or two. And I have 200 grams of glacier cherries going in now. Glacier cherries look so beautiful and they're like rubies. And even when you bake the cake, you will find that they still are very prominent in showing forth themselves inside your cake. So I'm going to scoop up all the toffee-like dates and all the nuts that I chopped. And now I'm going to add 120 ml of port. Port is a fortified wine, which is wine with distilled spirit added to it to stop its fermentation process. So now I'm going to add the 200 grams of semolina to the mixture. If you look at the mixture now, you think that it's curdled. That's because we've used so much of acidic fruit, like the oranges and the lemon zest and all of that. But once you put the semolina, it's all going to be perfectly fine. Brown diamond going in. So that's 200 grams of brown diamond and half a teaspoon of baking powder, quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg, just under quarter of a teaspoon of cloves, quarter of a teaspoon of cardamom, a whole teaspoon of cinnamon. Smells amazing. Mm, I got that waft. I'm going to add rose water, two tablespoons. And then I shall add one tablespoon of honey and one tablespoon of golden syrup. So here I have a instant coffee which is a very lovely flavor and I love it. Now this one is um, a Zira Nescafe. It's decaf, it doesn't have to be. I'm just going to add half a teaspoon of that. You will taste the distinct difference in flavour of cake that has got coffee and not. So, pat it off, take the mixture out. What you can't experience is the amazing smells. For the baking, I have a 20 centimetre diameter tin here. For the base, I have put this tin on top of the parchment paper marked out the circle, cut it and I put it at the bottom, so it's like that. Now the cake is ready in its tin, waiting to go in the oven. While the oven is heating up to 150 degrees C or 300 degrees Fahrenheit, we are going to follow this rather unusual tradition, which is inserting a coin, and usually it would have been a half penny coin. I've got a penny coin here. I've thoroughly washed it, scrubbed and washed, and I've wrapped it in foil. So these coin, I'm going to now actually insert it into the cake, and I'm not sure who's going to get it, but it's going to bring good luck. I shall insert it, like so. These coins that were occasionally added to the Christmas cakes as a good luck touch piece. Now, a good luck touch piece is a coin or a metal believed to cure diseases and bring good luck. And in this case, I'm hoping that it's going to bring a lot of good luck. So now the cake is going into the oven and I'm going to cook it for about 45 minutes. And then after that time, I'm going to reduce the heat down to 140 degrees Celsius or 275 degrees Fahrenheit and bake it for a further hour or hour and a half, depending on your oven. 
and the best way to check is to put a clean skewer inside if it comes up clean it's done so keep checking every 15 minutes after the first hour and then I'm going to come back and show you how to do the mask pan and the icing on top and we may even have some little a uh, little house or part of Christmas snowman or even the fern leaves I don't know but we have to Rosie and I are going to decide what we're going to do to decorate the cake so as I said this is one of seven cakes so you're going to see us decorate it afterwards see you shortly so the cakes had first 40 minutes and then it's had an hour and a half in the oven so it's time to take it up and I have been checking it from time to time to make sure that the top is not too brown and that it was um, not liquid in the middle so I've checked all of that so you know your cake is ready when you take a skewer a clean one and then you insert it down the middle and it comes out clean so you know it's done so while it's still warm what you can do is take your port or your gourmani or whiskey or brandy or sherry brandy whichever you used um, in the cake ingredients you take some of that and then you take a spoon then you can either use honey or golden syrup some in sweet about half a tablespoon of honey into about 100 ml of pork to mix it while it's still warm you would take your skewer make some incisions all the way around like so like so now i've done it and then you feed your cake so this process is called feeding your cake so pour it in and your cake will immediately absorb it. So this liquor laden cakes can be kept for months if you look after it um, by wrapping it in cling film and foil and then putting it in a cake tin. You can repeat this process, which is called feeding, every week until Christmas. So that's our cake. We'll leave it to cool and we'll come back and I will show you how to put the marzipan on top and then the icing. See you shortly. So here we are, in the final stages of completing our fruity Christmas cake. Just in case you're wondering, the cake that went in the oven was round and this one's square. I baked seven cakes and this is one of seven. I made the round cakes in different diameters. This one is one of two square cakes. So first we're going to Put a layer of jam to make the icing, first of all the marzipan stick and you, you could boil the jam, usually people use apricot jam, I'm using a marmalade um, and even with marmalade what people do is they boil it and then they strain all the uh, pieces off but I'm not going to do any of that, I'm just going to skip that step and just apply with a kitchen brush all the way around and with marzipans you can buy two different types one is a yellow marzipan uh, which is called a golden marzipan like so and the other one is a white marzipan i've got the golden one it's quite yellow but it doesn't matter because it's going underneath your layer of icing so take the marzipan off the packet like so and i've got some left over from the other cake so i'm just going to mold it both together and have my daily workout for my arms. So I molded it into a giant ball combined with two ices I had, and you take out your rolling pin. Now, when you have to roll this onto your surface, make sure your surface is clean, I've washed it, wiped it, and you can either use icing sugar or cornstarch, like I'm doing, corn flour. Just sprinkle it on the table like so, so your marzipan doesn't stick to your work surface and then you start to roll it out so it like that turn it 90 degrees and then roll it out again so I roll out the marzipan 
to about a quarter of a centimetre thick. And I've also pulled out my slightly longer rolling pin, so I can roll it onto my rolling pin before I actually transfer it onto a lovely fruity cake, which is square shaped. So you roll it on, like so. So the marzipan was 500 grams, and I had a 50 gram uh, board of marzipan prior to starting uh, this process. So I think you'll need about 550 grams of marzipan per cake. So here I am transferring it. So just roll it out and just smoothen it. You can have special gadgets for smoothening this out, but I am just going to use my hand. If you want, you can use a tumbler like this. If you are a prolific cake maker, you would have all of these things. So if you're thinking of becoming a cake maker or baker, you could buy all of these things and keep it, but I bake very rarely. So, so when you get to a corner, just stretch it and don't be frightened because it'll do its thing. Like so. Because you're going to cut the excess with a very sharp knife. When you get to the edge, just do it right. And carry on. Get to the edge, just flare it out like a skirt. And just push it down. Now with the tumbler, because your fingers are different indents and shapes, so you do this with the tumbler. Like so. And go all the way around all the way around here and then you complete it now use a sharp knife and don't cut into the cake but cut almost adjacent to the cake like so so you get a very neat corners and neat edges so, last but not least, side. So, and now you can lift off your marzipan, the excess. And don't throw this away, save it for your next cake. And when you do save marzipan or icing, make sure it's thoroughly clean film and in a sandwich bag maybe, and keep it thoroughly airtight in an airtight container. And that way it can stay for another six months until you make another cake. So now, marzipan is on. Another layer of jam goes on top. And this time we're going to be sticking our icing. So we're going to follow the same process for the icing. So this icing came straight from a packet. I can mix it. Sometimes you can buy it rolled out already so you just spread it onto your cake straight away but in this case I have actually bought a block of it so all I'm doing is just I put it into room temperature now I'm trying to mold it into a ball before I can roll it out so I've actually made this into a giant ball so we can the same again a bit of cornstarch so it doesn't stick to your work surface and then Break off the remnants of your marzipan <laughs> and now start rolling it out. Can you get your work, daily workout? Once you roll a little bit like that, you turn it over and then you roll it this way. Try and get it to a square shape if at all possible, not that it matters. And now, when you manage to get it to one thickness, just turn it to 90 degrees. Now your rolling pin, and then you roll it. Turn it again, 90 degrees. Then you roll it up that way. When I roll out icing, I always make sure that it's very thin because the shortboard ones are very, very thick, and it always ends up in your plate and then in the bin. So, I mean, as long as you can get your cake covered with the icing, that's all that matters. And if, if the layer is very thin, you'll find that people might attempt to actually eat it. So if you have little cracks like this, don't worry, just touch it with your hand. I think I've got enough surface area to 
color this cake. Back to my longer rolling pin. Start from this edge. If there's going to be any cracks, I'm not going to worry at all. I'm just going to patch it as I go along. I did worry when it was my first cake. Okay, here we go. And then transfer it onto the cake. the same sort of steps which is spread it out first and then push it in spread it out spread it out and then push it in when you get to the corners spread it out pull up the shape and push it in and back again you can see it's cracked and just push that in like so I mean, you're baking for your friends and family. I don't think they're going to complain. You just have a few blemishes here and there. So, with the tumbler, I'm just going to do that. And do it on the side. And again on the side. And now use a very sharp knife. Cut it, and I said cut it exactly at 90 degrees to your cake. Don't try to cut into your cake. Let me do this. Like so. And last but not least, now you should be able to remove the excess. Just like you did with the marzipan, make a ball, throw it in an airtight pin and you will be able to use it next time you make the cake. And here you have ready-made snowman and Christmas tree. All you have to do now is just dab a drop of water. You can do that using a like a spoon. So let's imagine we want a Christmas tree here and another one here. And another one here. So we take our three Christmas trees and we place them where we put the water, drops of water. And when it dries, it will be very stable. Now let's say that we need a snowman here and a snowman here. Snowman here and a snowman here. Likewise here and here. Then you pick up your snowman and place them. And once the water evaporates and dries, your snowman will be well secure in its place, in its position. Making snowman or Christmas tree is quite easy. All you have to do is for the snowman, you have two balls with the icing sugar like this. And then you would make a hat and a nose. For the hat and the nose, you have to make, just take out the fondant and then you color it with red or orange in this case and make a tiny ball and then make a pointy end. That way you have your nose and then you take your fondant, make a, a larger ball for the body. So push that in just to hold the icing together and then roll it, push it in, roll it, push it in, roll it. And you should have the body for a snowman there. That one. And then you do the same again for the head. So for example, this one. I'll do one and show you demonstrate it to you. So the head will be slightly smaller than the body. Then you put some water to stick on its nose, like so. So now you've got a snowman, so you roll out a tiny bit more of the icing. 
can you make a little scarf for the snowman? Or not just a scarf. And then taking a point, like a toothpick, you do the eyes with black colouring or even brown. So here we've got all our snowmen and all the Christmas trees in place. You can sprinkle some of these bronze crunches, although it's edible. Just to decorate it, just to give it that like a gravel effect, you just put this. It will roll off when you cut it, or it may stay on the case, but it doesn't matter. And then you can find these on the internet. It is called a shimmer cape decoration. So you just go like that, and you, if you look at this now very closely, it's just plain icing. But once you spray this, you can see how very quickly it changes from being just an ordinary white icing to this rather glamorous glistening cake and there you have it your lovely christmas cake merry christmas everyone